Now, millions of people across the world use drugs without causing any harm to others. So criminalizing them is unnecessary, it's harmful, it's not proportional, and to us, it undermines the right to privacy and the right to human uh, dignity and personal autonomy. So that's why, um, as a member of the commission, of course, but as a, as a physician who's really witnessed the AIDS epidemic among people who use drugs from the very beginning, I hadn't a second of hesitation in co-signing. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to WN420. I'm Lance Storm. Today I found an article from Before It's News. American media silent after UN just called for decriminalizing drug use worldwide. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell will let you know when we drop cool new videos. Well, without further ado, let's get down to it. American media silent after UN just called for decriminalizing drug use worldwide. One year after ignorantly doubling down on the war on drugs, the UN is now calling to end prohibition. The drug war is crumbling. July 4th, 2017 by Justin Gardner. A little-known public statement issued by the United Nations last week contains a dramatic shift in thinking on the issue of illicit substance use. After recommitting to the failed idea of prohibition just last year, the UN is now calling for the worldwide decriminalization of drug use and possession. The statement put out by the World Health Organization, the WHO, as the US is in the middle of another political debate over health care, calls for ending decriminalization in health care settings. The WHO calls on states to end decriminalization against marginalized and stigmatized populations in a variety of ways and includes a blunt and rather shocking statement on the drug war. We the signatory United Nations entities call upon all stakeholders to join us in committing to taking targeted, coordinated, time-based, multi-sectional actions in the following areas. Supporting states to put in place guarantees against decriminalization in law, politics, and regulations. By reviewing and repealing punitive laws that have been proven to have negative health outcomes and that counter established public health evidence. These include laws that have criminalized or otherwise prohibit drug use or possession of drugs for personal use. This is an administration that the problem of drug use is a public health issue, not a criminal justice issue. Locking people in cages for the victimless behavior of ingesting substances arbitrarily deemed illegal by the state does nothing to reduce drug use or supply, as evidenced by the utter failure of the war on drugs. Prohibition has also denied people the miraculous healing powers of cannabis. For decades, medical research of cannabis was stifled by the drug war, born of racism and political suppression. But research has increased exponentially in recent years as governments around the world take steps to decriminalize this medical plant, notably among states in the US. <clears throat> With this awakening has come amazing stories of healing through cannabis, such as stopping seizures in children with debilitating epilepsy, treating post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans where all other treatments have failed, and healing a host of other illnesses without the dangerous side effects of pharmaceutical drugs. In terms of healthcare, prohibition is truly discriminatory, and the drug war only degrades public health. Portugal decriminalized drugs in 2001, and it has been a resounding success. Drug usage rates, addiction rates, overdose, death, and sexually transmitted diseases have all declined. The WHO's statement is also notable because it contradicts the UN's recommended support of prohibition during their 2016 special session on drugs. The special session was the first to be held in almost two decades, and we're expecting a softened approach from the failed war on drugs. Despite pleas of countries like Mexico, suffering from horrendous black market drug violence to move beyond prohibition, a prohibition framework remained in place. In the UN's 1998 special session on drugs, the world agreed to work toward a drug-free world by 1998. The sheer lunacy of this position is blatantly obvious now more than ever. Despite decades of prohibition and trillions of dollars spent, drugs remain easily accessible. The WHO statement comes at a time when the US drug war is in a pivotal moment. 
More and more U.S. states are decriminalizing cannabis at both medical and recreational level, putting themselves at odds with the ongoing federal prohibition of cannabis as a Schedule I narcotic. U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, a well-known rabid prohibitionalist, is taking steps to ramp up the drug war, calling for increased police measures and prison sentence, even though this approach is a proven failure. There is little hope that Sessions and other drug warriors around the world, such as Philippines President Rodrigo Dutre, who is now having his police forces murder drug users on the spot with explicit blessing of Trump, will pay any attention to the WHO call for decriminalization. Nevertheless, the WHO statement is an encouraging sign that the tide has turned against prohibition. As the drug war is dismantled piece by piece, in Portugal, U.S. states, Mexico, who recently legalized medical cannabis in Canada, soon to legalize recreational cannabis, the wisdom of ending prohibition will become ever more obvious. With the World Health Organization stepping up and saying that cannabis isn't bad and it's time for decriminalization of drugs, it sounds like there might be a whole lot of changes in our future. Although I don't think I'll be making any trips to Portugal anytime soon. If you guys like what I do here, leave a comment in the section down below. Let us know what you think or any topic ideas that you would like to hear us talk about in the future. I'm Lance Storm. This is Weed News at 420. Stay beautiful and stay positive, people. Have a wonderful day.